March 2022, Melitopol's Museum of Local History, southeastern Ukraine, the first target in a Russian looting spree that began just weeks after the invasion. As the Russians take the city, museum director Leila Ibrahimova buries a priceless collection of Scythian gold deep in a cellar, somewhere she hopes occupying forces won't find it. The next day, the Russians came for her. Uh, they put a hood on her head. Uh, they took her, in Ukraine, they call it Padval. It's a basement where they just lock you up and they torture you. They wanted to know where the collection was. The only thing they underestimated was her character. And uh, when they put a gun to her head, she said, I'm not afraid of you. No, I'm not afraid to die. Um, I'm sorry. Now she's in a safe place, but her family is not safe, so she cannot uh, talk about it. They target museum workers and museum directors specifically because they are leaders for their community. And when they cannot uh, get them to collaborate, then they persecute them. Of course, Leila Ibrahimova did not uh, let the occupiers know where collection is, but later some people with special equipment came and in the basement they found the collection and uh, they uh, launched a kind of a propaganda campaign which was widely disseminated through Russian propaganda channels showing the newly appointed director who is Ukrainian telling that look this collection was attempted to be looted by previous museum leadership эти мерзавцы наверняка желали продать не только её но и всё наше историческое наследие but luckily thanks to Russia occupation these collections are being preserved. The same week, a group of men turned up at the local history museum in occupied Mariupol, looking for the famous works of Mariupol-born artist Archip Kuinji, who many Russians claim as their own. Among the intruders, pro-Kremlin TV anchor Alexander Mozgovoy. В этот раз прибыли в Мариуполь, если можно так выразиться, целым культурно-информационным десантом. Mozgovoy questioned the museum's director Natalia Kapasnokova on camera. Ничего не не удалось. Самая наша большая драгоценность это оригинал работы Коинжи. Мы его спасли. Он сейчас находится в тайном таком месте. Off camera, the TV anchor says the director revealed the location of her secret collection, her home. Footage eventually emerged of masked men loading the collection into minivans, and a picture was posted by Mozgovoy, holding Quinji's red sunset on the Dnipro. Then the focus turned to the city of Kherson, and what would become the occupying forces' biggest heist yet. When the Russians first arrived at the Kherson Regional Art Museum, Museum director Alina Dotsenko told them her collection had been relocated. Initially, that satisfied them. Dotsenko says the artworks would have remained hidden if members of her staff hadn't given them up. I knew there were Russian collaborators in the team. They were obvious, and they'd really made themselves known since 2014. I caught them, and they promised that they wouldn't do it again, that they changed, but that wasn't true. They hadn't. In May 2022, Dotsenko faced intense pressure from Russian authorities. She was summoned to a commander's office and, fearing the fate of other museum directors, fled Kherson. On July 19th, Russian police and intelligence officers moved on the museum. On that day, six armed men went through the building. They were wearing masks. With them was Natalia Desyatova, a local singer who introduced herself as the new museum director. They also brought one of their collaborators, Natalia Koltsova. They took the keys, opened up the locker, and everyone saw the collection right there. And the collaborators shouted, See, we've been telling you for the last six months. The collection hasn't been moved. The director and her staff are lying. We will run the museum with you, under Russian governance. We've been waiting for you. When the Ukrainian troops closed in to take back her son, the Russians started moving the collection out of the museum. 
Some of the pieces were treated with care, but others were just thrown in. We can identify the paintings, because every painting has a number at the back. As the Russians retreated from Kherson, they emptied the city's museums of around 15,000 pieces of art. Photos have since emerged of dozens of pieces from the collection in a museum in Russian-occupied Simferopol, Crimea. There is nothing random about how the looting unfolded. Human rights groups say the organized operation to rob Ukrainians of their national heritage amounts to a war crime. For the people tasked with protecting that heritage, Ukraine's museum workers, it constitutes an attack on Ukrainian identity. Anything that can be associated with Russian culture has been looted. But dozens of museums, archives and other cultural sites have also been intentionally damaged or destroyed. Putin, he is destroying and targeting what he cannot associate with the Russian culture. For example, uh, right behind me, those are the artifacts uh, from the Ivankiv Museum of Local Lore. It was the first museum that was actually precisely uh, hit by Russian missile. And it had a great collection of artworks by Maria Primachenko, a very widely known uh, Ukrainian naive painter who absorbed Ukrainian tradition into her artwork. They targeted that museum. And those artists and their artworks are very connected to real Ukrainian identity were neglected or imprisoned in Soviet times. International monitoring satellite laboratories prove that no other building was hit, so it was intentionally damaged. Putin, on the 21st of February, clearly declared that Ukrainian cultural heritage it's something which belongs to Russia. And uh, by attacking our cultural heritage, they attack our national identity, trying to just clean up everything which is connected to us as Ukrainians. <laughs> Vladimir Putin has repeatedly dismissed Ukraine's history and trivialized the idea of a distinct Ukrainian identity separate from Russia. Ukrainians see continuity with episodes from Russia's imperial past, the push in the 18th and 19th century to suppress the Ukrainian language, or later, in Soviet Russia, the mass targeting of Ukraine's cultural leaders, historians and writers. In the here and now, Ukraine's heritage is a justification for the war and a target of Russian forces which makes protecting that heritage an existential issue for Ukrainian culture, a matter of survival. They started the war because of our cultural identity. They want to erase it. What they cannot possess, they want to erase. How dare you have a different cultural identity? And all our cultural heritage, it proves that we are different. This is a heritage war. This is identity war. And Putin really tries to destroy Ukrainian nation, and one of the main issues is of course our cultural identity. Cultural heritage and the long centuries history of Ukraine, this, this are, these are things which kept Ukrainians as Ukrainian for centuries, which makes us much stronger, which uh, makes us feel as we are a community which differs from Russians. And this is the most dangerous to Putin. Thanks for watching. Now hit that like button and leave us a comment to let us know what you think about anything that we covered this week. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter. Does anyone really call it X? Facebook and Instagram for updates from the show. Links are in the description.